as is how cats think of themselves to how cats think of everything else, is how live action is to cartoons, at least for a lot of people. Lots of people see animation as something that you can throw on to stop Lily from screaming at Billy because he stole her last M&M. It's basically something to put on for the kids to make them be quiet and something that is basically childish. Animation just isn't taken seriously for a lot of people and the Spider-Man movies are kind of evidence to that. There's some movies that were a lot worse than Into the Spider-Verse that is that have done way better than Into the Spider-Verse when that's way at the bottom and they're above it. And there's lots of other things to prove. I mean, if you're on this channel, chances are you like animation, so you've watched a few of those videos. There's quite a lot of them around showing why animation isn't just for kids, why animation is worth watching. That's not going to be what the focus of this video is. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why animation ended up being viewed as a kid's thing and isn't viewed as an adult's thing anymore. As you can imagine, lots of what kind of made up the beginnings of animation revolved around Disney. Walt Disney, before he was making feature films, was making shorts and while everyone around him was doing animated shorts that were mainly around slapstick with characters who didn't really have much personality, Walt Disney kind of doubled down on personality and wanted to make characters who the audience could really connect to and see for more than just laughs. And what was right in his thinking, when he made these characters, um, people loved the characters. And as you all know, when a company in a market starts doing well, other companies try to copy. So inspired by Disney shorts, the Looney Tunes came around, came, came around. And slowly they started to kind of grow the industry and um, yeah, this industry at the time wasn't seen as a kid's thing. It was seen as an industry for everyone and people of all ages enjoyed the shorts that were put out. This was a new and exciting market for people and Walt was helping to push the animation industry along through his shorts and then through Snow White and people again loved it. Walt always had the philosophy that he wanted to make stories that would basically be able to appeal to everyone. It would be intelligent enough for adults, it would have stuff that kids would enjoy. He wasn't really aiming at a particular group of people, he just wanted stories that everyone could enjoy. And obviously reaching everyone and not niching down is a very hard task, but in the animation industry this makes total sense to want to reach everybody. Animation is a very expensive process in pretty much all cases, or at least in a large majority of cases. Animation is going to be more expensive than a feature-length live-action film of the same length. And this was because of the process of making an animated film. Computers have changed this a bit nowadays, but when Disney was just starting out, for each second of film there would have to be 12 individual frames, or 12 pictures basically made for one second of film and in some cases when there was an action scene or fast movement that to be 24 of those frames for each second. So as you can imagine this took ages for animators to do and this as well as a variety of other reasons is the reason why um, traditional animation was just so expensive and even with modern advances it still continues to be a very expensive um, form of medium. And just for an example, if you take Snow White, which was made in 1937, and compare it to some of the other films that were live action and were big in 1937, Snow White had a $1.5 million budget, whereas Dead End had a $300,000 budget, and A Star Is Born, no, not that one, had a budget of $1.2 million. In 1950, Cinderella had a budget of $2.9 million, while Sunset Boulevard was $1.75 million, and Mother Don't Tell Me had a budget of $1.4 million. And also, yes, there are exceptions, such as Bambi in 1942, which had an $858,000 budget, whereas Casablanca had a $950,000 budget, Although Casablanca was 1 hour 42, whereas Bambi was just 1 hour and 10. So yeah, there are discrepancies, but for the same amount of time of film, animation is pretty much always going to be more expensive than live action, basically. And don't worry, I said all of that for a reason. 
With budgets that high, obviously companies are going to want to get a return on their investment and to limit their audience just doesn't really make sense. If you're going to be doing films that are above PG, you're going to have a harder time doing merchandising, you're going to be a bit more limited to adverts and you're just not going to get as many people going in because obviously you're cutting off an entire part of your audience. You're cutting off anyone under 18, let's say. And I mean, luckily, Walt Disney loved fairy tales anyway, so we didn't really have to go that deep into thinking about it. So yeah, Snow White was a G film and every film after that film from then until now has either been a G film or a PG film. And this extends across pretty much all of Western animation, at least for the major studios. And yeah, as you all probably know, Snow White was a huge success. And then literally two years later, World War II began. And during this time, Disney made feature films for a little bit, but they couldn't keep doing it. Lots of Europe was cut off um, from being shown these films. And obviously people were at war. They weren't really wanting to go and watch um, Disney's films in cinemas. Eventually, Walt Disney had to go back to making shorts and package films during their wartime era. And by, by the way, the package films are basically a series of short films drunk together. And the kids who have seen Snow White and enjoyed it as kids basically grew up without the continuation of these um, animated feature films being made. They grew up with package films being made, which they probably weren't watching because they weren't exactly that good. And most of the time, Walt Disney's attention was towards the war effort. He was like making films for the army and stuff like that. So the kids basically had to go back to watching live action films and they grew up with those live action films because obviously they couldn't go back and watch the older films because they didn't have TVs at the time. They didn't have phones at the time. They didn't have Netflix. They couldn't just open up an old film on Netflix. They don't have Plex or anything like that. So the only way they could see films was in cinemas. And the new films were starting to be shown in the cinemas, all these live action films that were still being made um, during the wartime era. The only time that they got to see Disney's animation in cinemas was when Disney re-released them, which happened to be years after their original release date. So even with that, they weren't seeing animation in cinemas that often. And this is basically where I think the cycle began. I feel like these kids grew up through World War II and after World War II without Walt Disney's animation. They only saw it when they were kids. And I feel like because of this, they kind of looked back at their childhood, they saw animation as being a part of their childhood, and they thought, oh, okay, this is something that I had during my childhood. I kind of moved on from animation and I moved to live action. And to further back that up, um, after World War II, TVs were starting to become a thing, and with TVs came a lot of cartoons. There was stuff like the Flintstones, there was stuff like the Jetsons, Top Cat, Scooby-Doo, and yeah, I mean, these were shows that I watched when I was a kid. These were shows that I really enjoyed. These shows were made to be very easy for kids to digest. Um, there were shows that parents, could, again, could just put on for kids and just leave them to watch. And yeah, as parents put their kids in front of these shows and they kind of left to do their own thing while the kids were entertained, I feel like, again, it was kind of played off as a kid's thing and I think that's where it started to kind of really come about. And even after Walt Disney went back to making the feature films, the trend kind of continued, I feel. So from Disney came Jeffrey Katzenberg, people like Don Bluth, Brad Bird, and many others who were taking Walt Disney's knowledge of making in-depth characters with great personalities and making feature films that would appeal to everyone and would have deeper meanings to them and things that adults could understand, well not understand, adults could relate to and would enjoy while also giving kids things that they could relate to and enjoy. And even though all these people were going out and doing that, because of the cartoons at the time, as much as I love them, they were as they were. And because of the whole break with the wartime era, I feel like adults from that point, probably didn't start giving animation the chance that they should have been given it. And because all these films were G and PG, which were because they wanted to appeal to everyone, parents started to see these films not just 
being okay for kids, but being for kids. And yeah, basically I think it happened through a whole load of bad timings. As for where the trend with animation is going to be going, I'm a bit mixed and at some points I'm optimistic and at some points I'm not. On one hand there's films like Into the Spider-Verse, which I know I talk about way too much, and companies like Leica Studios who are doing some great things with animation. And then on the other hand there are companies like Illumination Studios, who are, well, Illumination Studios, you know what type of films they do. <laughs> and then there's Disney themselves, who are making remakes of films left, right and centre, and I'm in some ways kind of insulting the original works by um, remaking films that just didn't really need to be remade. I mean, I say that, but I literally mean, like, one of the animators was literally offended by the Lion King remake being a thing. And I mean, they're insulted for good reason, but then Disney also has their reasons for remaking these films, because the Lion King film then went on to become the highest grossing animated film ever, even though Disney don't even want to admit that it's an animated film. And I, I don't know, some parts of the animation industry make me happy, some parts don't. I mean, Disney, on the other end, their animation division is doing great. I personally really enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph. Their revival era has really had some great films. There's going to be Frozen 2, which I'm pretty excited about. There's going to be this film called Raya and the Last Dragon, which Disney are going to be making. I think it's going to be coming out in 2020. Um, and that's a film, at least from the concept art, that looks like it's going to be a really interesting film. I'm really looking forward to that film. So I just don't know what, ha what will happen, but I guess if you can take any way, anything away from this video, it's the fact that you probably should give animation a chance. There's a whole lot of great animated films that have very deep meanings to them and I've got things that anyone of any age can really take away from them. And basically, I just want to say, just give animation a chance. It's not what it was in the cartoons back then. You know, easy to digest for kids, but not really much for adults. If you agree, if you think there's a different reason, or if you think I'm totally wrong, which is totally fine, you can fully disagree with me. I'd love to hear your theories down below too. Um, so yeah, comment those below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Gosh, I've got hiccups. <laughs> yeah, subscribe for more videos like this one. And yeah, I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.